Well, it's a pleasure now here on GCR for the first time to meet the new president of, ba of business operations for the Baltimore Orioles. She is Katie Griggs, and she is with us now here on GCR. Katie, it's Glenn. It's great to meet you. Thank you for taking the time and a belated congratulations on the new opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thrilled to be here and I'm looking forward to the conversation. Katie, I, I wonder, I know it's only been a few weeks, but the biggest thing that you've learned, like everything you knew about the job and obviously the high level of experience that you had, is there something that stands out that you've already said, wow, this maybe is either different than I expected or just something that you've already learned about the uniqueness of the Orioles of Baltimore of this opportunity? Well, I've had about two months. So I was, I was around for the end of the season. I was around for the postseason games. And I think what is incredibly apparent um, that I had anticipated before I got here, but don't think I fully appreciated is the role that this club plays in the community. Um, watching our fans come and support the organization, getting to spend a lot more time in the incredible ballpark we call home. Um, it's been a pretty fun start to the, start to the experience. Um, okay, so you have obviously been in baseball for a little while. You have other experiences. W was baseball something that you always knew that was where you wanted to end up, or did that just sort of come about with the opportunity in Seattle? You know, it's interesting. I don't think it ever had occurred to me it was even an opportunity. Um, working in sports in general, I've been incredibly fortunate over the course of my career to have the opportunity to do a variety of different things. And I think if I had started out with that as the goal, I don't know that I'd be here. Uh, I played mm. Little League growing up, so baseball's always been a passion of mine. My team was the Durham Bulls. I always get that question. It was the Durham Bulls growing okay. up in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, you know, so I'm thrilled to have a, the opportunity to be working in baseball now. I think one of the things that I'm most passionate about that I think is truly unique to the sport is we have 81 home games, which means in terms of the ability to welcome in the broadest swath of the communities that we serve, baseball has that. Mm -hmm. Baseball has the ability to do it in a way that's differentiated from football or basketball or soccer, not because we're better, but because we have so many home games, we have such large stadiums that we have the opportunity to be that place where the whole community can come together. Well, and it seems like, I, I'm so glad you brought that up. I've had this conversation with a lot of people over the years, Katie, that like, the civic touchstone part of this, it can't be lost on anyone. Like, as a city, this is the gathering place for, for the majority of the year. This is whatever's going on, and I, and I know the Orioles do a great job with this when there's other um, you know, Olympic athletes that are celebrating. When, whenever there's a first pitch that's thrown, there's all these unique opportunities for everyone to gather together that, that there, there is no comparison to it, I think, within any city. No, I, I agree with you, and I think it's something that's a privilege to have the opportunity to be a part of pulling that together because there aren't a lot of spaces where that exists these days. And so it is something that I think baseball is uniquely well positioned to do, but it is clear that within the Orioles organization, within Baltimore and within Maryland, that there really is a unique space here. Katie, I'd be remiss. I know, um, you know, everybody down in Sarasota, it's been a tough few weeks. And as an organization, you all made a big donation this week to those efforts. Can I, I guess twofold. Can you tell us a little bit about that and, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask. I, I, I do think that we've heard that everything at Ed Smith Stadium was, was all right. The operations, everything is, is status quo. Yeah, no, so all right's a relative term. I think the yeah. reality is the facility had some da damage. Our training facility had some damage. But by and large, we were incredibly fortunate, and we know that. Um, but we have a lot of staff down there. We have a lot of fans in the area, and we recognize for many of them recovery is just beginning. And just because we were fortunate with our physical infrastructure doesn't mean everyone else in the community was. And so it's important to us recognizing that the same way that Baltimore is our home for many months of the year, Sarasota is our home. And we want to make sure that we're taking care of our fans and our family members and our members of our staff down in that area. So to your point, um, we were able to make a donation recognizing that we need to put our money where our mouth is and support the people who support us. But we're also really excited to have been partnering with our ownership group and be partnering with other foundations in the area to have a matching program in place for fans, our staff, our players who are eager to give back and looking to find ways to have their dollars have a bigger impact. We're really proud of the fact that we've been able to set up an opportunity for them to do that as well through the Season of Sharing initiative. So we're going to link that up on our Twitter account, at Glenn Clark Radio, because admittedly the URL is is a little wordy, but if, if you... I don't <laughs> it's know, a if, little chunky. Yeah, if somebody's got a pen nearby, it is cfsarasota.org slash Baltimore 
dash Orioles, dash Hurricane, dash Milton, dash Relief, which, again, <laughs> is a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to link it up on our Twitter account, at Glenn Clark Radio, so that uh, you can just click that link. And, again, up to $250,000 on top of the original $250,000 will be matched by the Orioles in donations. So a significant contribution to the relief efforts for our friends down in Florida, which is greatly appreciated. Katie Griggs is the president of business operations for the Baltimore Orioles, and she's with us here on GCR. Katie, you just mentioned the ownership group. Um, it, it's still obviously a relatively new group for everybody in Baltimore that everybody's getting to know, and we have seen David Rubenstein be quite the man of the people over the course of the last year and go out of his way to, to throw hats and make sure he was shaking hands and kissing babies and getting to know everybody. But but what is it about this group as you considered this opportunity? Was there something unique about David, about this ownership group that made you say, yeah, those are the people that I want to hitch my wagons to? Well, I think, you know, their reputations precede them in terms of, you know, they're very intelligent, successful businessmen. Um, but as importantly, they're both David Rubenstein as well as Mike Garagetti. They're good people, and they're people who really care. They're not doing this from a standpoint of how do we have a private equity turnaround. They're doing this because they recognize the role that this team and this organization plays in this community. And they want to be a part of it, and they want to support it. And so it's really exciting to have the opportunity to work with and for and around people who share my personal passion for how do you create a place where communities can come together and how do you invest intelligently on doing the things necessary to create the environments and, frankly, create the fun and the wins mm -hmm. that all of us are looking for um, to create that experience over the long term. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny you say that, right? Your, your job is your job no matter how good the baseball team is, right? Like if the team – win 60 games, you still have a job to do. But it feels like the dumbest guy thing in the world to say. I can't imagine that it isn't a lot easier or, I don't know, more fun at least to do the job when the team is good and in the playoffs and the games are relevant in August and September of a baseball season. Oh, it's, it's certainly more fun. I think the opportunity here is we have a great team. You know, the work that Mike Elias and Sig and Eve and Brandon have all done over the past few years, we have a great team, and I, we expect to have a great team for years to come. The opportunity for us is how do we make sure that we're giving our fans the opportunity to get to know it if they haven't already, and when they come to the ballpark, they have an incredible experience and want to come back again. This is, again, something where – we recognize that baseball is what we do. It's who we are. It's the core of everything about the Orioles. But we also want to make sure that we are creating that space where fans can come together, feel seen, feel appreciated, feel welcome, feel like they belong. It, it, um, because to your point, best team in baseball, you still lose a bunch of times. So we need to be uh, we need to be prepared for the nights when, unfortunately, that's the outcome that we don't want is what happens. You know, it's interesting because you mentioned event, uh, memories at the ballpark, and and obviously a lot of people talk about you know, potential events. And I do want to talk to you about some of those big things. But I, one of the things I noticed that you all did in Seattle that's never, I don't think, happened at in Baltimore was you all hosted graduations at the ballpark in Seattle. We is, did. Can, can you tell me a little bit about how that came about? And is that something that as you take this on in Baltimore, you say, hey, that might be a neat way to get people into the ballpark for them to say, hey, I, I want to know more. I want to maybe come back for a, a baseball game. Well, I think to the point that I raised earlier, like the Orioles, the Mariners believe that they have a role not only as a baseball team, but as a citizen in, of the community in which they reside. And I think that was a legacy activation that they had done for a number of years in terms of the relationships that have been built with local colleges and high schools and community colleges. Um, it's something we certainly can and should and will look at in terms of does that make sense in this venue. Mm -hmm. So I'm early, early on enough that I uh, – there are lots of considerations in play, but definitely a conversation we look forward to having. I, I feel like there's a um, – somebody would say, hey, when you get uh, $600 million in public money, that's a lot of money. Is there an obligation? And maybe the answer is no. This is the way it works. But is there an obligation to say, hey, we do need to be more accessible to the public because the public is playing a big role in what it is that we're doing here? No, I think to your point, there's – Funding aside, there's an obligation. Sure. That is, that's why we exist. We exist for our fans. We exist for our community. Similar to what we just talked about in Sarasota, you know, our job is to create that environment and provide support to the people who provide the most support to us. So I think that's something that is an evergreen um, initiative of ours, um, with or without funding. Can I ask if um, 
youth baseball, high school baseball, things along those lines might be something that I, I, I've i always said, like the, the memories that people have of having played, in, and there have been high school, like all-star games at the ballpark in, over the years. Those memories are eternal, right? And, and, and people take them to their grave telling their grandkids about them. Is, is that something that you'd be willing to explore moving forward? I think I think lots of things yeah. are, we're willing to explore. This is this is one of the fun parts about coming into an organization new and having a new ownership group is it provides us with an opportunity to take a fresh look at what have we done, what haven't we done, and what are the opportunities looking ahead. So is it 100%. And, and is it safe to say that like the concert thing is not going to end? Because I, I tell you, the, the couple years ago, Paul McCartney played at the ballpark, and it's maybe the most magical night of my life. So I would really <laughs> like if we could maybe have a few more of those coming in the coming years. Gosh, I hope not. No, that was a that was I had the opportunity to be there for the Bruce Springsteen, Springsteen concert. Yeah. It's it's a venue that performs incredibly well. You actually have great acoustics with the warehouse in the background reverberating back into our fans. So no, it's something that we're really excited to continue to figure out how do we do more of that looking ahead. And obviously we know an even more uh, an upgraded sound part of this moving forward as the team has already talked about that with the uh, renovations to the baseball stadium. Um, uh, Katie, I, I wonder if I could pose this to you because I wrote a column for Pressbox this month where I defended, like, there's a, you know, whenever you see a stadium that's not completely full for a playoff game, there's a lot of people that, that'll say, oh, that's embarrassing. And I said, wait, whoa, 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 let's think this through. Th- we all remember what the weather was like for two weeks. It was miserable <laughs> around here. It was awful. And afternoon games are tough. And these things, and there was a handful of empty seats. It wasn't like the stadium was you know, half empty or something like that. I, I, I feel like it's not that big of a deal, but I wonder for you as the, the president, if you say, no, 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 that is a problem for me, and I want to prioritize making sure that no matter what the circumstances are, we have every seat full. Like, how do you approach that? Well, I think there's the where do you want to be versus recognizing the realities of the situation. Yeah. I want the ballpark to be full every single night, period. You know, I want to be that place where our fans want to be, where they feel that this is how they want to be spending their time. This is how they want to be spending their money. And they, this is an experience that they can't get anywhere else. So as far as I'm concerned, anytime I see an open seat, it's frustrating for me. And I'm looking at how do we do better and how do we look ahead? Practically speaking, it was the first time we've had a wild card game here in a while. And they happened pretty close to the end of the season. And so from a communication and timing standpoint, that's a little bit tough because it's new. And to your point, their afternoon games, the weather wasn't so great. Um, but no doubt that's something we want to look at and do better. Is it something I look at as a emergency or a reflection of our fan base not being there to support the club? No. Do I look at it as an opportunity to do better next time? Yes, I do. Is there is there an engagement aspect of that that you like for the off season during the time where there isn't the same night to night touch that is a pri and I know a lot of this like the the, the grounds issue and, and what might be around the stadium, but is there a desire for there to be more of a touch for the Orioles and the community throughout the course of the year after the baseball season has ended. I, I think so. I mean, the, re, the reality is we are, we're around. It's not like our business shuts down in right. the off season. We're still here. We're still plugging. We're doing a lot of work to figure out how do we come back bigger and better, both on the baseball side and the business side in 2025. Um, and part of that is talking about what are ways in which we can more effectively engage with our fans over that period. But again, that's one of the reasons going back to Sarasota why being a good community member down there is so important because we recognize that's when our season starts. And for many of our fans, it's not on opening day in Baltimore, although we hope to see them there. But for many of our fans, they're coming down and they're seeing us before in February and March down in Florida. So between now and that February timeline in Florida, we're hard at work trying to figure out what will we, what can we, and what should we be doing? I, uh, I have never minded spending some of my March down in Sarasota. It is not a bad place. Yeah, it is a great, great place to be. Um, and we'll, we will uh, remind everybody one more time. Hey, Katie, if I could, just before, I, I know you, you touched on during your introductory press conference. I, I, your ba- you do, I, I mentioned some of your background. I know you also have a background in broadcasting, or at, at least on the broadcast side, not actually being a broadcaster. I want to make no that abundantly that. clear. Now, wait a second. I don't know. This is going pretty well. I actually would be interested. <laughs> Um, You're very kind. But I, I do, you know, I, I think things like um, the relationship with Mass and the app, things like that, how important is that for all of what we're talking about in terms of engagement and keeping things breathing year-round for the Baltimore Orioles? Oh, it's it's critical. I mean, this is, as, as anyone who follows the world of sports media would know, this is a challenging time uh, for regional sports networks. The landscape has changed pretty um, 
rapidly over the last few years. But we also recognize that's still the way that most of our fans spend most of their time with our organization. And frankly, it's also the way that most of the Nationals fans spend most of their time with the Nationals organization. So broadcast and media plays a massive role in terms of the way in which we look at engaging with our fans and making sure that we're building those connections. And we are very um, spending a lot of time looking into that and what we can do differently, what we can do better there as well. The, and I'll wrap with this, the significance still um, of, and, and it's, boy, this is an organization where, um, you know, it's not just you, obviously it's Melanie, it's, it's Eve. It's the, it, what does it mean to you still at this point to be part of a smaller group of women in these prominent roles in baseball? Or do you look around and say, I don't know that we can call it a smaller group anymore? Well, I'm, I'm pleased that I'm no longer the only female president in baseball. There are two of us now, so that's we've doubled, <laughs> doubled since yeah. I started. So that's a good thing. Uh, but no, look, it's, I think there is. we recognize that our fans represent a lot of different backgrounds, both race, sexual orientation, gender, you know, are you a parent? Are you not a parent? And for us, I believe that there's a tremendous value in having people working in the field who reflect different life experiences that our fans may have. That's how we get better. That's how we get smarter. That's how we anticipate opportunities to be better community members, not just for some, but for all. So um, I look forward to it being a larger cohort, even than it is now in the future. Um, but it is also something that I take pride in, largely because I'm hoping that by seeing someone like me doing it, that there are other women who are willing to take the chance down the road. That's excellent. Again, if you go to our Twitter account, at Glenn Clark Radio, we have put up this link to the Community Foundation of Sarasota County, and I'll, write, I'll read it out one more time, cfsarasota.org slash Baltimore-Orioles-Hurricane-Milton-Relief. But again, go at Glenn Clark Radio and you can click the link and everything up to $250,000 donated by Orioles fans will be matched by the organization on top of the initial $250,000 they have already donated. So get in and throw a couple of bucks that way and try to help out our friends in Sarasota. And as Katie mentioned, you're going to want to be there in the spring. Um, so let's try to help out that community as much as we can. Katie Griggs, uh, really wonderful to meet you, and I appreciate you having this conversation. Would love to do this again as we get closer to uh, spring training and to opening day. Thank you so much for taking the time for us this morning. Thank you. I appreciate it.